Hi, parents at NTDP. Uh, just wanted to thank you guys for your attention today, and very privileged to have one of our clients and a former NTDP alum uh, came out of the program in 2010. Justin Falk is here to join us uh, via video chat here to kind of tell a little bit about his experiences there, some of the things that your sons might be uh, experiencing over the next two years, and um, just basically his perspective on how he enjoyed his time in Ann Arbor and, and some of the challenges that may come your way. So hopefully it's informative. Um, Justin was nice enough to take some time out of his summer to uh, jump on Google Chat here with me. So uh, Justin, thanks for coming out. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, glad to do this and excited for it. All right, so I, I basically just prepared uh, four or five questions to kind of steer the conversation in the direction you know might be useful. Some questions that possibly the parents in the audience have today. So um, I guess my first question is, you've been out of NTDP now for three years. Looking back on your time there, um, what was kind of your overall big picture of the experience? Did you enjoy it? Um, what were some of the best parts? Just kind of speak about broad strokes. What was your time like at NTDP? Uh, personally for me, my time was great. Um, I enjoyed the whole two years of my experience there. Uh, I think with the 22, 23 guys that we had, we were, especially with my team, we were able to form a pretty good bond right from the start. Um, and I still am great friends with a lot of those guys today. Uh, I was actually texting a few of them earlier this morning. Um, but I think just the friendships you make when you're out there, the kind of growing up aspect, moving away from home at 15, 16 years old, um, it just kind of makes you mature pretty fast at a young age. And uh, those are some experiences that I would never take back. Um, kind of made me the person and player I am today. Um, like I was saying with the maturing part, I think, Going out there, more importantly than hockey, it sometimes is just becoming a, an adult. Um, a lot of the ways they treat you there, they treat you well, um, and the way they make you grow up, not act like a kid everywhere you go, um, just kind of clean shaven most of the time, short hair. Uh, as you can see, I got away from that a little bit as I've gotten older, but uh, just little things like that. It's just kind of learn to be polite around people and have manners. Um, I wouldn't change anything in learning those things there were probably one of the best experiences of my life um, and obviously the hockey part was always really good uh, I think I was lucky enough to be able to win a gold medal I know we're going on a pretty good streak here with the under 18s but um, it's just those experiences of playing division one college at 17 years old a year earlier than most players because you know we get the chance to play 12 15 games a year against college teams um, all those experiences international just on like you can't even count how many it's just that experience is something great. Uh, I'll never forget it. Great. Well, I think we're both on the unshaven train right now, so we might <laughs> get a little talking to from everyone there. But, no, I, I appreciate the kind of broad strokes there. And I do think um, for most kids, especially, it, it is a really memorable experience, and you talked about the growing up factor. Um, I guess kind of my next question is I guess, sort of related to some of the challenge that these players are going to come in having all been a go-to guy on their previous team and coming into a much more competitive lineup environment where maybe you're fighting for ice time. I know the first year they do run the lines, um, especially throughout the USHL season, um, so that does help. But was it an adjustment for you um, in terms of coming into a much more competitive hockey environment on your own team? Um, and if so, how did you deal with that challenge? Um, yeah, obviously there's... 23 guys that are coming in from wherever and they're all pretty much either the best or second best player on their team obviously if some of them come from the same team that's might be the way it is but um, with me there's obviously a bit of an adjustment I was uh, one of the last defensemen picked for my group and uh, so obviously going in I don't think I was viewed maybe as the go-to guy or anything like that um, kind of had to work for everything and work for my ice time when I got there um, but I think that's the way it is everywhere you go um, as you grow up, you're no longer going to be maybe the go-to guy in every situation. Um, and I think with that and rolling four lines, you kind of learn to play different roles and you kind of learn to grow your complete game or your overall game as a player. Um, being the go-to guy before going in there where I was, I mean, you kind of get away with doing certain things, kind of get to do whatever you want and no one really cares. Um, and then when you get there, you kind of, like I said, you become a complete player. You 
mean, maybe one game you're on the third line, you're not playing power play, or maybe you're just playing penalty kill, or maybe neither. It's just uh, it's experience you're going to have with you the rest of your life. Um, obviously, not everywhere you go, I don't think you're going to play power play or penalty kill, or even, I mean, you look in some, guy, some teams in the NHL, they sit their best players still. It's not... Um, like the end of the world if it happens today, um, and I think being coming into a group of 23 good guys, it's just I mean it kind of brings you together and makes you grow as a player. Um, you if you make it to the NHL one day, which obviously you, we all hope that every single one of you do, uh, I think you'll say that all three or all 23 of those guys were go-to guys at one point, and now some of them are third, fourth liners. It's it's just whatever you make of your opportunity there and uh, make of the situation you're put in. I think is what would be the most important thing going down the road? Great. Um, I think you know you touched on a lot of important pieces there. Um, just that as that funnel narrows as you move up to the pros and to the NHL where you are now, it's not always going to be a guy that can go out and play 25 minutes like you and, and be in every situation and and just kind of be the be all end all. And it, it is a little bit of a learning and adjustment period where you know you have to get used to a Limit, little bit of a limited role here and there and just try to make the most of it and have that confidence and that mental maturity to keep you know persevering and working towards your goal. Don't let it discourage you. So um, kind of that said, was there a big difference in terms of your enjoyment level or your development or your confidence from the first year at NTDP to the second year? Did you find that there was a big jump there at, at that time in your life? Um. I think obviously the second year coming in, you're a bit more comfortable with your surroundings. Um, you know the guys and you know how the program works and everything. Um, obviously the first year I came in, I was pretty nervous. I didn't know what to expect. Uh, only guy from Minnesota. I really didn't know many guys on the team at all. Um, so I didn't literally had no idea what to expect or no idea how things worked or anything. So it was a bit of an adjustment period for me. Um, I'll tell you for sure my first few games I was – Terrible. Uh, I just was not very good. I was just nervous. I don't. I can't even tell you why, what exactly it was. But um, I, looking back, I'm not too upset about it. It's just the way things were, and I'm kind of happy it worked out that way. But yeah, the first year is a bit of an adjustment. Um, new community, new school, new built family. If everyone's building, um, new friends. It's takes a bit of, to get used to everything and uh, to become friends with everybody um, and get those relationships. But definitely coming to the second year, you're a bit more comfortable and you're a bit more loose, and I think you're able to kind of focus and play or focus more on just playing hockey and, you know, getting better at the rink because you know how things work. And Obviously, there's a group coming in and a group that's been around, but um, those bond even the first year and second year. It's just you can talk to each other. It's just able to make that easier for first-year players, but... In terms of playing-wise, um, you're playing a better group of players your second year, that's for sure. Um, playing the college schedule, uh, that's a little bit tougher than just USHL teams and international experience, but uh, that's definitely an experience you're going to want to keep with you, especially if you're going the college route. I know probably some of you will go to juniors. That's just the way things work, and some guys go to college. But uh, like I said, the difference between first and second year is uh, not nothing too crazy, I don't think. Uh, nothing anyone can handle, but um, it's definitely just going to be a little bit different. But it'll be fun still. Um, so I guess kind of that's a nice segue. You did choose to go to the University of Minnesota Duluth. You were lucky enough to win a national championship there as a freshman. Um, so again, congrats on that. But then you decide to leave after only one year of college. Can you talk about some of the uh, factors that went into that decision, why um, yourselves and, and us, um, you know, decided to have you accelerate your career, leave college after one year, and I'm sure you would probably admit that NTDP playing that college schedule as an 18-year-old prior to going to UMD, um, you know, also factored into that. But can you talk about some of the other factors that went into your decision to leave and, and sign with uh, Carolina? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously... Like you said, you guys helped a little bit with that decision. Uh, but no, no pressure from you guys or anything like that. Um, I guess the biggest thing for me is I went into college, and like you said, I had that bit of experience from playing college games the year before. Um, and with that, I think I was a little bit confident going in. I had a little bit of, uh, I guess, confidence in just my overall game, uh, playing against college 
players already. Uh, I kind of knew what to expect, and I think that helped me a lot playing those. I think, I don't even know, we might have played 10, 15, whatever it was. Um, uh, those games it just helped me big time. Uh, I was able to just adjust to the game a lot easier when I got there, and uh, I was able to play pretty well from the get-go. Um, luckily, I guess, and that's not obviously the case for everybody, and I won't sit here and tell you I've had every game that was unbelievable or very good games. I've had poor games when I was in college and everything like that, but um, what factored into it most for me is I think, like I said, I was able to adjust pretty fast, and I was able to learn the game there pretty quick, um, and I was happy with my game there. and um, I just kind of felt after we won the national championship that uh, – I don't know, there wasn't much left to do for a team aspect in college hockey, so it kind of helped my decision to leave school. Um, I was lucky enough to have a coach that supported me. He actually told me uh, he was going to tell me to stay and win a national championship to, before I left, but uh, we were able to do that anyways that year, so that was the only thing he had to say to me, and it was uh, kind of relieving at that point. But um, I'll be honest, I'll say I'm not the most studious guy in the world, uh, so that didn't help. This Walmers, you might know a thing or two about that, but uh, it was, um, I mean, I had fun. College was a great experience for me. Um, like I said, I was able to make the jump, and I guess the one thing I asked from Carolina is that if I knew I had a chance to make the team or if they said I had an opportunity out of camp to make the team, that was enough for me. Um, I wasn't going to leave just if they said, oh, yeah, you're going to be playing in the AHL all year. Um, I didn't think that would have been the right path for me, but when they gave me the opportunity and said I would have a chance out of camp to fight for a spot, um, I took that upon myself to get better that summer, to get better and prepare for camp, and uh, it worked out uh, the right way for me. Great. Yeah, I think you know you hit the nail on the head there. You accomplished the team goal, which was so important to you, and then we as uh, you know advisors and, and you had, had some very productive conversations with Carolina and just kind of had a good sense that you would have that opportunity. So everyone's time frame is different. Uh, there's tons of guys that will be there for four years in college, and that's the right route for them. So it just kind of works out for everybody. It's a little different. Um, I guess kind of also relating to that, my next question is, what are some of the biggest differences hockey-wise um, between NTDP to NCAA or potentially OHL uh, to the to the pros. What are some of those um, small factors of the game that maybe these kids here can can pick up on? Um, what what are some of the biggest differences you notice is be between the the tiers of play as you move up the ladder? Um, I would say the biggest thing is probably just. Uh, it's going to sound pretty funny, but it's the littlest things, I guess. Uh, getting pucks in, getting pucks out, um, just keeping it simple. Uh, I mean, you go, I guarantee most of you guys can skate fast. Most of the players in, at NTDP can skate fast. Everyone in college can skate fast. Everyone in pro can skate fast. And they can all stick handle. They can all shoot the puck hard. But uh, you get the ones that can, you know, get it out. I mean, minute left, they get the puck out. They get it deep. Um, I think that's honestly one of the biggest things you notice. Uh, players that keep it simple often have a lot of success, I think. Um, and, I mean, you notice it a bit as you go up levels. Uh, a lot of you, U18s, U18s going into next year will, I mean, you'll understand that when you start playing college guys. Obviously, there's the strength factor. Um, going from under-18s or NTDP to college, junior. Um, I'm not too familiar with junior, so I can't really touch on that too much. But a lot of the guys in college are stronger. They're 23, 24-year-olds. Uh, I have a buddy that was 26 last year. Um, I hope none of you have to do that. Uh, you played four years, injured two years, but uh, yeah, they're just a lot more mature and a lot stronger players in college and obviously professional too because you get out there against some old men, uh, 35, 36 years old, that's uh, old to me these days. Um, but yeah, it's the things they can do, little things. Um, I mean, you look at guys that make a career out of just getting pucks out or blocking shots or getting pucks in, it's it's unbelievable uh, how Everyone can do that these days. There's no one that tries to really make the extra play. Obviously, you have Sidney Crosby, Malkin, Ovechkin, those guys. They, there's a reason they do it because they get paid a lot of money to do it probably too. But, um, yeah, that's uh, one of the biggest things I've ever noticed is the more you simplify your game, the easier it becomes and the easier it is for your team to play with you. Um, and I think 
that's what helps a lot of players. Um, I don't think there's many guys that if they can't get a puck out of their zone or if they're a winger and can't get it out or a D-man and can't put it on the tape that really make it too far. And uh, I think if you can get the bat or get the most out of the little things in the game, it'll help them most. Great. No, I, I think that's all useful stuff. I just I, I don't want to take up too much of your time today. I just kind of want to finish with the last question here. What was what was the greatest memory you had uh, from your time here at USA Hockey at NTDP? Um, and, you know, talk about why just briefly it was so special, and then uh, we'll wrap it up. Um, I guess winning gold in Belarus. Um, I mean, we had 22 guys that had put in two years' worth of time together. Uh, obviously, there's one or two guys that came from different teams that join us over there, but those two years of hard work, uh, you're sweating, you're working out, you're fighting each other literally um, for two years punch each other in the face, whatever it is. Moms, you might not be too happy about that, but you made the decision. Uh, no, it's uh, it's all worth it. Um, but everything we went through the, for those two years, the ups, the downs, um, the friendships you made, everything like that, and it just kind of all came to an end when we won that gold medal. It was uh, something that we realized that it was all worth it in the end. Uh, some days you go to the rink and you definitely don't want to be there, and there's some days where you can't be more excited to be there. Um, there will be times when you want to go home, you miss your friends from home, but uh, at the end of it, when you're gone, like even now, I wouldn't change anything that happened there. Um, it was all a great experience for me, and like I said, the winning the gold kind of topped it all off and made it a little bit better, a little bit more special, but um, there's definitely nothing I would change about going there. Uh, they were all great experiences, and there's a lot more than winning gold that I remember from there, and I guess even maybe more important, the friendships I've made that I probably won't lose for the rest of my life is uh, one of the biggest things, too. Great. Well, hey, thank you again for taking time out of your summer, uh, Falker. We really appreciate it. And, um, you know, you've gone on to do great things and, and made the NTDP really proud uh, to have you as an alum and, and be an NHL regular. And you're just scratching the surface. So, uh, again, thanks again for taking your time and, uh, you know, speaking with some of these parents here and with me. So, we appreciate it, and um, we'll, we'll look forward to continuing the discussion at a later date. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. And, uh, I'm glad to do this, and it was a lot of fun. And good luck to everyone coming in or that's still coming back for the second year. Uh, enjoy it, and um, just have, make the most out of it. All right. Thank you.